Hey all, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your busy day. I'm gonna make it worth your while. Uh, we're gonna dive into Product Manager OS. Now, this is the operating system that I used initially as a product manager, then as a head of product, and still used today as a chief product officer at my own startup. And it's a really good way for you to get a structured understanding of exactly what you should be spending your time on as a product manager. Because product management is one of those roles where it's not like an engineer where your work is given to you and it's kind of clear set or a designer. Really, there's no kind of playbook or system to follow. And that's what I've tried to do here. I've tried to give you the tools and the systems that you need in order to absolutely excel at your role broken down by function so that you can start becoming a better product manager tomorrow. So what are the goals of this operating system? Well, first and foremost is to make you more effective as a product manager. We want you to be indispensable. It's also gonna give you the fundamental structure you need to excel in all the different business functions. You've got marketing here, you've got design here, you've got data. It's very difficult to coalesce all those things together and this framework makes that possible. It also relates it all in uh, different databases which we'll see further down the line. It's also gonna reduce your stress because it's gonna be very clear what your priorities are. You're always gonna have something that you know you need to be doing that's high priority. And it doesn't require you to have a ton of PM experience, a CS degree or any formal qualifications. Everything here is explained and everything here is going to be a high value activity that's going to make you more effective in your role. So who does this work for? I think it's great for new PMs who are perhaps unsure about what they should be filling their time with. You can get so easily distracted with a lot of nonsense, to be honest, if you're a product manager, not focusing on the important things like talking to customers, which we'll get to uh, in, the, in the customer discovery bit, or running A-B tests, which we'll get to in the testing framework. Uh, it's also great for people who've been doing product for a while, but perhaps feel like they're plateauing in their role. It's again, not a job where it's easy to just see, okay, here's my route from product manager to head of product, for example. These things are often quite unclear, but some of the systems in here are going to be things that will be done by a, a higher um, degree of uh, role. It's going to make it very easy for you to take that step up. Uh, and also, um, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, people who are kind of wanting to take that next step up uh, in, in their current role and are very familiar with, with product management. So let's dive into, into the actual framework itself. We've got seven different sections from product and engineering uh, to strategy, marketing and design, each of them uh, really serving a purpose and giving us some incredible tools that we can use in our toolkit to become better PMs. So let's start off with the product requirements factory. Obviously creating product requirements is a huge part of the PM job role. And I've created a system here that leans heavily on AI to make sure you can create the best product manager uh, product requirements possible. So how this works is we actually just need to fill in here a couple of quite simple things, a product background and a product statement. Then if we press this button to critique the feature, it's gonna take these two inputs and output with Notion's AI uh, integration a critique of why this feature might not work it's incredibly valuable because you've got someone that you can bounce ideas around with a way that you can get feedback without presenting it to your whole team we'll then take this and reconfirm our product statement or problem statement and generate requirements this is going to give you the fundamental underpinning of your feature these requirements are something you can then build on you can then use ai more to ask you for edge cases which we'll get to later in the prompts and we've also then got a way to get engineering comments. So often when you're doing your PRs and you maybe present them to the engineering team in the sprint planning, you're gonna have like 20 different questions of which 15 you might know the answer to. This makes sure you're gonna know the answer to, to all of them. So by copying and pasting this into the table here and then pressing generate engineering comments, it's gonna give you all the comments that an engineer might ask delivered by an AI so you're prepared for that meeting. As well as the product requirement factory, we have product execution home. This is gonna show you a roadmap view of all of your tasks, make it easy for you to add new ones, uh, just like coming in here, uh, example task. It's also gonna give you the tasks by the Epic, the tasks by assignee, and also a view of all of the Epics themselves. So you've got a very easy place where you can see everything that's going on. So if your company doesn't yet use Jira, or if you're working for a startup that doesn't have a proper system implemented, this is a great place to start. Within here, we have customer discovery, probably the backbone of product management. You should be spending at least five hours a week, I think, talking to customers, ideally more. 
And the object here is what we do is give you a very easy framework to follow that's going to make sure you get the absolute most out of customer interviews, that you're not just getting them to validate what you already kind of want them to say, that you're actually getting to the root cause of their problems and really understanding who these people are and the issues that they're facing so you can then go and make features to solve them. So within here, we've got a preparation section. We've got the interview process itself along with interview guidelines with really sound advice such as focusing on their life, not your idea, keeping your questions uh, you know, open-ended and also taking uh, notes. And then we've got the final section which is around synthesizing and analyzing these different ideas. And then the idea is you can just send this to other people in your team, the marketing department and get a really clear uh, understanding from them about what you're working on and the features and why. Within marketing, we've got a go-to-market competitor analysis. So within here, I've broken down exactly how I do competitor analysis whenever I'm working on a new product. So we've got in here the hierarchy, we've got the similar web stats, which I explained in the explainer video for this, why it's important, and also a way for you to easily input screenshots about the marketing channels, the sales strategy, everything that you would wanna know about a competitor so you can really understand their go-to-market. Because often as product managers, we get too obsessed with the product and we forget about the marketing, which is more than half, I think, of the reason that products succeed. So this helps you really understand that competitive landscape and get ideas for your own distribution. Uh, an incredible uh, resource, I think, for, for doing that. We also have customer personas, which comes with everything you might expect from pain points to core needs. This also relates to the customer journey mapping. So within here, we can work with our teams to map the journeys of our customers from awareness uh, all the way through to onboarding and mastery. These link to the customer personas. So you clear for each persona what their customer journey is looking like and a good way for you to then optimize that by thinking, okay, the onboarding is a bit clunky here. How do we improve that to maybe improve our overall conversion rate? We also have product comms. How often are you, as a product manager, I don't know, maybe you're more organized than me, I always uh, forget to announce features, especially if they're small ones and it's just internal stuff. So within here, it's gonna link to you all of the product tasks that haven't yet got a uh, announcement uh, pinned to them. You've then got a button here, and all you need to do is press that, and it's gonna generate you new tasks to announce that. So it's very, very easy, everything uh, in one place. We've got creative briefs. Working with creative is a bit different to working with UX. You know, UX, you would probably integrate more into the product development process because it's part of the, of the product itself. But often as a product manager, you'll be working on things like, you know, rebrands, UI updates, this kind of thing. In here, we've got a great template that you can give to creatives in order to make sure that we're getting exactly what we want from them. We've got user testing. So user testing uh, can be kind of boring, usability testing, but this process makes sure that at least you're not gonna to have to repeat it, uh, at least for the, for the same feature. So we have two databases here, testers and tests. In testers, this relates to the persona uh, that we went through earlier, and it just gives you the pre-interview questions that you're gonna to wanna to ask these different testers to really understand what they're like uh, and group them, uh, depending on what their kind of tech savviness is and all that kind of stuff. Then we also have a framework that you can use for testing, so scenario planning you know, different scenarios that you'll want to run through. Uh, you know, can you go from A to B on the app? Can you then go from B to C? And then a way for you to document your observations, questions, the user thoughts, and any difficulties that might come up. Uh, so working into data, we've got a testing framework here. So you can run your A-B tests. You have an example uh, of different questions, hypotheses, success metrics and then you can give this a result of whether it's significant or not. If you can be the person in your organization that builds up this deep library of A-B tests, you, everyone's gonna love you because you're gonna be building out the playbooks that the company can use to scale a lot quicker. Finally, in the data section, we've got questions you should know the answer to. I built this because of personal embarrassment I had at a Christmas party when I was asked some like really basic question. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was something like what the company recurring revenue was. It was my first job as a PM and I didn't know the answer. It was very embarrassing. So this is just a list of questions that you should know the answer to that you can work through one by one, add your own and have the answers here easy for you to understand. We also have uh, a few sections in the strategy section. So lean canvas. Lean canvassing is incredibly important. You wanna be doing this every time you launch a new feature uh, 
at least a new product offering, probably I would do it as well for features, where you're just really understanding the problem and the solution that you're trying to uh, deliver. Uh, and also the channels you might use, the metrics. It's, it, no one writes business plans anymore. You might write one or two pages, uh, you know, memos and things like that. But a lean canvas is an incredible way for you to understand all the business around a product that you're offering. So most product, or well not most, but like a ton of product ideas will actually come from your competitors. And not just because of the products they're not offering, but also the products they're offering. If your competitor is incredibly good in a certain element, then you're not gonna to wanna to compete with them on that. And that's what this allows you to do. So you can look at your competitors, it gives you a number of different dimensions from the pricing to the amount they've raised generally about the company, and then allows you to do a SWOT analysis and also a product teardown. If you do this for like five or 10 customers, you're gonna be in such a good position uh, to be able to yeah get the most out of your uh, product and really, really go for it. We also have OKRs. If you wanna step up as a product manager into a more senior leadership position, a good way of doing that is actually to get your team to start working towards some kind of joint objectives. This OKR system is really easy to implement. It's just a table, basically, uh, that you can put in your objectives at the top, your key results, uh, in here and then easy, easy tracking for your entire team. And again, a more detailed video on this in the system. Frameworks are very important for product managers. You know, when you first start off, you really wanna be collecting these frameworks. It won't be natural to think about them. It's kind of like training your mind to think in different ways. But if you can collect these frameworks and if you can add to them, then you're gonna be thinking from problems from a really, really deep, rich perspective. And Ultimately, that's what you're paid to do. You're a product manager, you're paid to make great decisions. So if you can collect these frameworks and make better decisions from them, add to this, they're going to become natural to you and you'll never have to look at this again. We also have some books in here that I think every product manager should have read. That could have included a lot more, but I didn't want to overwhelm uh, everybody. Um, but in here, I've included some of the top books and a summary of them. And the idea is that you can look at these and then read the full book and obviously add your own books in here as well. We've also got the uh, podcasts that you could listen to, some of my favorites, and some articles as well. And of course, GPT prompts, where would we be without this? I hammer ChatGPT hours a day, I have to say, and it's an incredible resource. So in here, I've put some of my favorite ChatGPT prompts that you can copy and paste directly into ChatGPT. Everything from business coaches to virtual PM assistants, it's all there. And of course, we couldn't do this without some productivity related stuff. In here, very clean, minimal dashboard for you to plan your week, to see your uh, kind of daily tasks filtered by ones that are due this day. And of course, a master list of all your tasks. So if ever your manager wants to know what you're up to, you can just send him this and tell him to shut up or her. Finally, we have meetings. So in here, we've got five different meeting templates from product roadmap meetings to cross-functional team alignments. All of these meetings have their own different uh, template. So within here, we've got the user testing template. It's gonna go through the agenda. Uh, it's gonna link to anything relevant. So here it's linking to the tests that have been done. And this is gonna make it so that you can conduct really effective meetings as a product manager, which is an important part of the job. You're gonna be spending a lot of time in meetings. So that's everything that you need to know about Product Manager OS. You can go and build this now just by watching this video a bit more slowly. Or if you wanna save some time, uh, I've also put this so that you can buy it. Uh, you can click the link, I think it'll be in the top right of the screen. It's gonna take you to some more information about it, give you all the testimonials. There's hundreds of people that have used this and found it incredibly beneficial. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna do that, check it out. Uh, but thanks a lot for, to, for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope if anything, it's given you some inspiration on different ways that you can be thinking about systems as a product manager and your operating system that you wanna put into place. So thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.